have to move away something I'm working on to open the mail. So again, the extra cutting mat comes in useful. And now I can open the first item, which appears to be two different items. Finally getting through layers of packages in packages, a couple of ESP32 S3 modules. I have not used these before. More and more I'm seeing these used in example projects, including those that use round LCDs. And I think these were on sale, so I got two more to go with the other two I got recently, so you can never have too many. And now I can get started with the S3 series ESP32. And for other projects, looks like a bag of modules. I might as well speed open these. I'm surprised these made it intact. This is a Hall sensor module. That one is more intact. Some of them are bending over backwards, but these are listed as KY024 linear magnetic hall switches. So it has a 49E hall effect sensor, comparator, and a sensitivity adjust trimmer pot. And when there's a magnetic field present, we can detect it on the outputs. I had an idea I'm going to be trying with some of these. The other item is an infrared reflective sensor, so it will send out an infrared light source and detect any reflections or lack of reflections from a surface, which I think it can detect maybe up to one and a half centimeters away or something like that. So these are used in things like line following robots where you want to track a dark line with a light perimeter around it or anything else where you want to detect the difference between light and dark objects. So again, we'll have a comparator to give us an output to indicate what's going on. And I had some things I wanted to try out with this. Then I needed some more transducers. So there's these smaller ones, 20 millimeter buzzer, they are calling it. But aside from using them to pick up physical vibration, like to trigger some circuit when an impact occurs, like a drum trigger. I've got some different sizes already, and I wanted just some smaller and some larger than the typical ones I have. And I want to try using them as contact microphones, so you can actually touch those to a surface and actually pick up sound. For example, you could do that on an acoustic instrument. I have some other things in mind, so I just wanted to stock up on the topic of contact microphone. This might have something of this size built in, and it just is wired to this plug. So if you want, you can just temporarily clip that onto an object and pick up any vibrations and get the audio from the surface you're clipped onto. So I have a couple of these to experiment with for quick usage. And then a couple of these different style contact microphone, they're calling it. Again, something like this inside an enclosure. And this time, instead of a plug, it goes to a jack. And you can stick that on with double-sided tape or something else on an acoustic instrument and have this jack on the end of the instrument so you can plug in a regular cable and use it as a pickup. So I needed a bunch of options to experiment with and these should give me good options. A few more things for experiments. I got two different sizes here. They have different size openings and different lengths. Brass grounding strip terminals. So of course you open up here, put in a conductor or something else you might want to secure, tighten that back down, and this mechanism itself, I believe those are M4 screws to mount this itself to something. Then you have ways to connect up to it, depending what size you need. I have a couple of packs of five tension springs, 0.8 millimeter diameter spring wire, 9 millimeter diameter spring, 60 millimeter long, with closed hooks on the end. 
you can extend that as needed if you need something under tension. And then compression springs, 300 millimeters long, 13 millimeter diameter, and 0.6 millimeter spring wire. So these are not as heavy duty as the other one. So there's five of these all tangled up together. I thought I had all kinds of things like along with nuts and bolts and things. I thought I had a bunch of different springs and I probably did for a couple of decades until the last time I moved and I threw a bunch of stuff away that obviously I'm never going to need. So of course now I'm buying stuff again. And of course whenever I see low-cost guitar effects on sale I have to get them if they're a reasonable price. So I bought a flanger and tremolo. As usual, I just want to see if things work. I'm not even going to tune this. I'm only going to play one or two strings at a time. So with nothing on, flanger, So now this tremolo with nothing on. That's tremoloing. So we can control how deep the effect goes to cut the volume and bring it back. Bias control, I think it's more like the wave shape, like does it totally cut it on and off like a square wave, or does it ramp it up and down more like a triangle or sine? And then speed. So they function. I don't know how well until I get them in a better environment. But I'm thinking also even to use stuff like this in sound effect circuit projects, not just trying to do professional audio, keeping the cost and the intention all aligned. As long as they work, they can either be used in some other project or they can become a project if I have to try and improve them. Thanks to supporters of the channel for helping make all this possible.